Hi, this is Jerry from Iowa, and this is Spike. You watch TJB videos. Let's get out of here. We're at the Petro Pass in Nipigon, Ontario. We have about 800 kilometers or 500 miles to go today to our destination. We're gonna sleep uh, probably at that uh, co-op, no, or is an Esso card lock or whatever that place is where the Timmy's is in Oak Bluff there on uh, McGilvery and the perimeter. Sleep there tonight, deliver this tomorrow morning, and then we head home for a couple of days. Oh, they got electric superchargers here, too. You know those uh, Tesla superchargers? They're across all of Canada now already. You know, I've, I've been so hard on electric vehicles, and uh, we can talk about the Tesla Cybertruck another day. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole video in itself. Uh, the thing is, with the Cybertruck, I think it looks ugly. It's growing on me a little bit, but it, it looks ugly. But the idea of it is awesome, right? I would go for the top of the line. It's, it's quite affordable compared to other trucks. I would go for the, the, the three motor, uh, top of the line. That gives you 500 plus miles of range. What, 180 kilowatt hour battery or something like that? It's got the four-wheel drive, it's got 3,500 pound payload capacity, 14,000 pound towing capacity, and these superchargers, like I said, are being placed everywhere, just like gas stations. So I always said, you know, I'm a conservative. So I'm not just gonna buy an electric vehicle because you tell me that there's a doomsday coming and the, the world is gonna end and blah, blah, blah. You're not gonna scare me into buying an electric vehicle because I like my pickups. But if you make it make sense to my wallet, for seven kilometers. you make it make sense to my wallet, and you give me everything I have with a gas or diesel pickup in an electric pickup, and you make it just as convenient and quick to charge it, okay, you got my attention. Especially if I can save some money. All right? Now, I've been thinking in the past about going, uh, you know, one day in the future, the far future, uh, going solar on our home, right? Uh, get off the grid. Now I'm thinking, if I if I can get our house on solar and I can charge our vehicles on solar, and my pickup usually sits at home most of the time because I'm out here driving my truck, right? I w I'm not very interested in electric semis yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. If I charge my pickup at home, I always have a full tank of gas. It's getting charged off solar, free gas for the rest of my life. And when I do take it out, it's just as easy to fill it up with electricity and energy as it was to fill up my my Silverado with gas. You know, now, okay, now you got me, you got my attention. I'm not saying I want to go buy one right away. I want to get, I want to let them work all the bugs out, especially with those windows that he's got on there. <laughs> Bulletproof windows, but not steel ballproof windows. But I just want to say it's very interesting. It's got my attention. They've made it affordable. They're setting up these superchargers across the nation. Okay. All right. If you're going to make it cheap for me and affordable and actually help my wallet. Okay. Now you got this conservative's attention. All right. We'll see where it goes though. I'm not going to jump at it anytime soon. I want to keep my truck probably for about another six years yet. It'll be 10 years old then. And we'll see where the Tesla truck is at in 10 years. There's also the Rivian electric truck that we've talked about in past vlogs. Got my eye on that too. The Tesla Cybertruck. 
outperforms that, but the Rivian looks better. I don't like the look of the Tesla truck yet, but you know, we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's like I said, if they make it doable, I'll consider it. But they got a lot of infrastructure and a long road ahead of them yet before they'll pull me on board. But they're not gonna scare me into buying one. None of this doomsday end of the world climate stuff to get me to buy an electric truck. Okay, you gotta you gotta make it make sense to my wallet. That's my rant on that. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? My pickup truck, I got a Silverado 1500. I got it on a lease. Uh, it was a long lease, five-year lease. Uh, I, it's a long, complicated story, but it was five long lease. But that's up next year in uh, spring of 2021, and I'm buying it out. So uh, it'll be about 16000 to buy out my truck then at that point. And uh, so I got to do a cost comparison, right? If I want to buy a new truck, especially if I want to go electric one day, if I'm thinking about it, I'm not saying I'm going to do it, I'm, just, I'm thinking about it. Okay, so now I could spend $16,000 into a truck and over the next five years with all my fuel and whatnot probably spend what $30,000 or however much I use in fuel. That's still less than what it would be to buy a brand new Cybertruck. Plus, like I said before, they got to work out all the bugs and kinks. All right, I want a couple of hundred thousand of these things to roll off the assembly line. I want people to try them out for a few years. I want all their complaints to roll in so I can see the reviews. And then I want Tesla to go and fix these problems and make them even better and make it better looking for crying out loud. Okay, now we're talking like five years from 2021. We're talking 2026, 2027, the, the late 2020s. All right, that's when I'll be looking for a new truck. And uh, if there's no good electric truck that grabs my attention, that's affordable, that makes sense to me, well, I'm gonna go with another gas or diesel. We'll see what happens then. Probably with a diesel at that point, we'll see. We'll see. So they have, um, I'm putting Tesla on notice and Rivian and all you other electric truck companies. I want a pickup truck that looks good, that can do everything my Silverado can do. And I want it to be affordable and cheaper. Convince me to buy one, all right? Convince my wallet that it's better. And I'll buy an electric truck, but there's some road ahead of them. I have some faith in them though. They're doing some great things. I mean, Elon Musk is sending spaceships into orbit. I mean, he's sending a spaceship to Mars. He wants to send manned missions to Mars within like the decade. Like if he can put people on Mars, I think he can design a truck that can do everything my gas truck can do, right? I, I have faith in the guy. He's, he's brilliant and his, his team of engineers are brilliant people, all right? I just don't wanna be one of the guinea pigs at the beginning that's testing everything out. I want someone else to do that. You guys, you tech geeks out there, you guys go buy them and tell me what's wrong with them. Tell Elon what's wrong with them, he'll fix it. Once all the bugs are worked out, hey, I'll come rolling in there and pick one up for myself. So about moving over to solar energy on my house, like it's something that Britt and I have to talk about in depth. It's not something that would be anytime soon. I have a lot of other debts I want to pay off first. It would be probably in like 10 years, maybe 20 years, sort of like a retirement thing. Uh, well before retirement, but uh, something so that when we do retire there, that uh, we can retire off the grid and not have these energy bills in our retirement years, right? But if we can do it sooner, maybe. They've got to make it more affordable because in our house, our property, we probably have to have at least a 15,000 watt solar system, which is huge. You have to have a huge, we got the space for it. We can have ground mounted solar panels. We can have them on the roof, have them on the garage, wherever. I would probably want to go big or go home and probably get a 20,000 watt system, which is ginormous. But that way you can be sure that uh, everything is covered even if we get electric vehicles one day and we have to charge those at home as well, right? That'll take a lot of extra energy. And also living at the latitude that we do, right? The latitude, the, the, the how far north we are. Like sure, we're right in Southern Western Canada, right on the US border pretty much, but we don't get a lot of sunlight in winter time, which means we would need a bigger system to capture more light in the winter time to get us through those winter months. And then we would also need some pretty big storage batteries 
on site as well to store all that energy so that we can use that energy through the long nights of winter. It's something I haven't even talked to Britt about yet because it's not something that I want to even think about anytime soon. I mean, I want to get my pickup paid off, this truck uh, paid off. It's almost there. We're almost there. And the house. But, yeah, it's something. You know, I've been thinking about it a lot more and more. Just to sort of get off the grid and you know, own your own power. You know, then it doesn't matter. If I have an electric vehicle and I have solar powered energy at home, it doesn't matter what the gas prices are. Raise them up to $5 a liter. I don't care. I got my own. I got my own gas at home for free. Oh, yeah? Going to raise electricity costs on us? Oh, that's fine. Go ahead. Raise them up to the sky. I got my own powerhouse. Right? And it's free. It comes down from the sky. It doesn't matter what price you put on it then. Carbon tax us all the way up to the moon. I got my own energy. I don't actually want that, but I don't want, I don't agree with the carbon tax because reasons, but you know what I'm saying. In the future, own your own energy. It's something that I've, uh, it has been bouncing around inside this empty head of mine. It's been, eh. Once we're paid off with the house and everything and debt free, maybe Britt and I, maybe I can convince her. You know, if it's gonna save us money, that's the thing. We're conservative people, so if it'll save us money, well, I could probably convince her. But if it's just gonna cost us too much money and not really save us that much in the end, I mean, I'm not even gonna be able to convince myself. So, we'll see where they're at. It's getting more and more affordable. And you know, one more thing about having such a large system, like a 20,000 watt system, which let's let's be honest, I'm just dreaming right now because that's very expensive. But maybe it'll come down in price in the, in the next 10, 20 years. We'll see. Having that big of a system, you're producing a lot more energy than you're using, right? Any of that energy that you don't use, you can sell back to the energy provider. At least around here, I don't know if that works everywhere like that. You can sell it back to the electricity company, and they'll buy it from you. You could actually make money on your energy bills instead of pay bills. Can you imagine if you flipped it, no longer had an energy bill, you had a, an energy payment dropped into your account? Thank you very much. That'd be pretty cool. I'm living in dreamland here. You guys got to remember that I'm a dreamer. So a lot of these things I talk about doesn't mean I'm just going to go and do it. I can't, I can't do everything that I dream about, but hey, there's no law against dreaming. And there's no law against chasing your dreams. That's why I say dream big, chase your dreams, you know? Go for it. Just make sure that you live within your means and you take responsible steps to get towards your goals. Don't take ridiculous uh, leaps forward unless if you're kind of that kind of a risky person you like to take risks and well that's hey, hey it's a free country you can do that too if you want to I just don't say trucker Josh told you to do it you know I'm not a gambling person really a little bit here and there a little bit you got to take little risks you know there's no reward without risk if you want to make more money in life you want to be more successful in life you have to take more risk Reward is a result of risk, for the most part. There are exceptions, I'm sure. Like me buying this truck, it was a risk. Yes, I can make a lot more money, but I'm taking a lot more risk. This truck could go kaput on me and I suddenly have a $40,000 bill to rebuild this whole truck, right? It's a risk we take. Knock on wood, not gonna happen. only way you can get to where you want to. That's why I don't hate the rich. I don't hate the rich at all. You know? I see these billionaires out there. I see all the hatred thrown at them. Especially like nowadays and stuff. Like, oh, we gotta we gotta steal what they've earned and steal it and take it away and you know, give it to people who didn't work for it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright, we don't know the amount of risk they had to take to get to where they are. All right, it might have been handed to them. Sure, okay, maybe they got lucky in life. Maybe they started from nothing and they risked everything and they won. Be happy for them. 
you know what, look to them as an example. I want to be rich like that. I want to be successful like that. Riches don't always bring happiness, but financial security sure helps on the road to happiness. You know? One of the leading causes of depression, divorce, and bad things in life is money problems. Causes a lot of strife, a lot of stress in people's lives, but financial security, no one can tell me that that does not lead to happiness. Whatever financial security is to you. You know, I've never seen an angry person driving a Ferrari down the street. I'm just saying. They always look pretty happy. <laughs> then there's the examples like Robin Williams, you know. Rest his soul. I, I, I miss that guy. He made. He was my favorite actor. I loved every movie he made. But, you know, he had everything in the world. He worked hard for it. He earned it. He was still struggling quietly with things that not a lot of people knew about. So... I don't know where I'm going with this talk, but go for your dreams and don't get mad at people who succeed. Try to do the same thing and succeed yourself. Because when you do succeed and you finally get there, you're not going to want all these people coming and taking from you what you've worked so hard to achieve. Don't be envious of people. That's a mess. Oh, wow, the truck hit the ditch, hit it, and burnt to the ground. Wow, totally burnt up, too. Whoa. That's what I mean. These highways up here are dangerous. And they refuse to invest into a four lane highway through here because there's not enough traffic to merit it. Yeah, well, how many people have to die? before it merits a little bit of a safer passage through here. Well, Canada's a rich country. We have a lot of money up here, a very strong economy. Yet we waste all of that wealth. We send it away to other parts of the world. Why can't we use that here? We worked for that. We earned that. We have to deal with these tiny little dangerous two-lane highways through here. Meanwhile, we're building massive roads and highways in other countries across the world. How about building some for ourselves sometime, you know? It's so frustrating to see how many people die on these highways every year. And I gotta drive these all the time. And they refuse to spend money on them to make them better for us. Because there's not enough traffic. I don't care if we have a four lane highway through here and only four people use it. If we have the money to do it, why aren't we doing it? Our safety isn't worth it to them. They have other priorities. That's my rant. That's my rant. You know we can do it. You know we can do it. We're one of the richest countries in the world. Yet, when we go through areas like this, our highways are... below the state of some... some other places in the world that... you know... Whatever. Whatever, that's my rant. I, I just get tired of seeing all the death and accidents on this highway. Such a dangerous highway. That's why we try to go through the U.S. as much as possible. So we took a break here in Ignis, Ontario. It's still snowing. I'm trying to get back on the highway here. Oh, the little bus is going to get in front of me. Is that a bus or is that a van? You guys make your judgment. Right ahead, it's coming from the right. Is this a minibus or is it a van? I don't know what it is. Oh, now there's a car coming. I just want to get on the highway, people. One second, let's wait. This is definitely a van. That's a van. and seven minutes of remaining drive time. Thank you, Elon. The highlighted route. Thank you, Karen. I don't need nine hours and six minutes. I need about five hours. Five and a half, maybe. It's on a little slow. 
Continue on this road for 442 kilometers. Okay. Why not? Because I have so many options. Let's just stay on this road. So I did get a hold of the customer and they'll be waiting there for me tomorrow morning. And then I already have my next week planned out. Actually more than a week. So next Tuesday afternoon, I'm leaving with a load of lumber, taking it down to Iowa. After that, I have to go to uh, Missouri and live load some steel. And we're taking that to Red Deer, Alberta. We'll be delivering that there uh, the following week on the Monday. After that, I'm not sure because I still have a whole week yet before I have to be home for Christmas holidays. So I want to keep myself busy for that week because I'll be home that entire Christmas week. You know us. Christmas isn't just one day. It's a whole week. At least. So, uh, you don't make much money when you're celebrating Christmas, but that's okay because it's Christmas. So you got to make all your money before Christmas. And I'll probably be gone uh, for, for New Year's. I'm not planning on being home for New Year's. If I end up at home, bonus. But, uh, I don't think I'll be, uh, I'm not booking it off or anything. This is a little town of Ignis. I often spend the night here actually, or I have in the past. They used to have a giant parking lot on the east side of town, and now they don't. They closed it. You can park a few trucks here at the subway, but you're not supposed to park there overnight. That's supposed to be just, you know, 15 minute parking, run in and get your sub and get out. Get your stuff and get out like a Walmart greeter. Hopefully this snow won't get too much worse, but I mean, we gotta go through Dryden, Ontario yet, and past Kenora, and then we're in Manitoba and the roads flatten out, and uh, I'm not too much, I'm not as worried about the snow on the roads there. It's just on these twisty, windy little two-lane roads. I don't, I don't like it when they're snow covered, but. Now here's some truck parking too at the Petro Pass. Not much though. I guess there's more parking up in Dryden. It's still better to go on the U.S. side. Oh, I know you can't see it, but on the right here, there's the Welcome to Manitoba sign. Welcome. Border, entering Manitoba. I already told him, Karen. So I'm going to stop here at the scale, even though it's not open. I'm going to stop here because it's not open. Take a little break. Walk the weasel and uh, stretch my legs a little bit. It's a bit of a long drive through those two lane roads, but now we have two lanes for probably another around five miles or so, and it's four lane divided all the way. God bless the West. We made it through Ontario again. They better not be in here. If they're in the office, I usually just keep going. I don't want to invite them out here. Because as long as you're on their property, they can come do an inspection on you. Right? That's why I don't sleep at scales if I don't have to. Because they could technically just come and do an inspection on you. They can do that at rest areas too. As far as I know, because it's publicly owned land. They can just come up to your truck and uh, shut you down. Tell you you're getting level one inspection. Even at a rest area. I've never seen that happen before, but... Apparently, they have that right. They let him go. They let him go. Turns out the scale in the opposite direction is open. I didn't realize that till I was outside my truck already, and then I saw that the other side was open. I was like, oh, great. So I did a full inspection on my truck because they were watching me through the window. I saw them. I did a full inspection on the truck just to make it look good. Should do that anyways, right? So I checked all my straps and uh, under the hood and everything. But uh, this one guy just pulled into the scale on the other side. He only had one headlight. And they just gave him the green light and let him go. The one headlight into Ontario, northern Ontario. That's dangerous at night. They just let him go. Well, apparently they're not. It's kind of cold out here. As soon as we hit Manitoba, it got a lot colder. It's only minus 10, but with the wind chill, it feels like it's about minus 17 Celsius right now. Not the coldest it's going to get this year yet, but it's definitely colder than it was in Ontario. It's 
a nice, nice reminder that we're home. We can freeze our face off again. So here we are, Flying J, Headingly, Winnipeg. I'm gonna stay here. Well, because I wanted to grab fuel and be out of my way to come here tomorrow to grab fuel. So it's a better parking lot too than that co-op. Figured I'd just come park here. It's only nine o'clock in the evening, so I should have no problem finding a parking spot. I'm gonna turn my lights off here so that I'm not blinding people trying to get us some sleep in these trucks. Let's see if we can find a good spot. Somewhere where no one's gonna back into us. Somewhere where it'll be quiet as possible. It's not too cold out tonight. It's about minus 10. Oh, it is pretty full already. Yikes. I was hoping to get in one of these spots on the left here and sort of back straight in out of the out of the aisle here, whatever you'd want to call it. Because then you're guaranteed not to get blocked in, right? Well, those are all taken already. All taken. See, there's some open here on the left, but I don't want to take those because People always park too close here on the right, and then you're blocked in, you can't get out in the morning. Wow, there's like people all the way to the back. Look at this. Oh, would y'all look at that? That guy's got a reefer, and this guy, that guy took up three spots, for crying out loud. All right, well. We're gonna go in right here beside this trailer. Get ourselves in there. Nice safe spot to park. So this is how we edit videos now. <laughs> Just uh, hook the computer right up to the TV, the HDMI cord. I block the screen here with a shirt so that this doesn't show me because both screens turn on, right? But I can still reach my keyboard in here. And I edit up here. <laughs> what do you think, Diesel? What do you think? Very nice, man. Very just people out here. You know, yeah, you people. Come look, man. Okay. Who do you see? Who do you see? Are you people? It's your people. It's very warm, man. Gotta turn the heat down. Where's the person over there? Person looking at us, man. Look, I'm looking back. I'm looking back. Look, he's staring at us. I'm staring at him. He's watching me, watching him. Just stare down. You just stare down. Just stare off. Staring bad. Oh, I'm good at these. Shoot a blink. I missed. Oh, I lost. I lost it, man. That's okay, Diesel. I forgive you. So, yeah, I'm kind of tired, but uh, actually, this light probably won't help the camera, will it? Uh, maybe if I hold it up here. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button if you do like my videos. Share them out so more people can see them. Uh, we're, we're, our growth is a little stunted right before 100,000. We're trying to get to 100,000, but taking us a little longer than we wanted to to get there. But we'll keep on trying. And I'm pretty happy with where the channel is right now, too, if we can just coast like this. You guys are awesome. Wouldn't be the same without you guys, so as long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos. We'll see you tomorrow.